Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. I'm Daniel. I am Rex. By the way, we've been forgetting, but there's still time. We're gonna start with it this time. June 11th through June 18th, which is a Friday to a Friday, is dry week. Okay. Noon on June 11th through noon on June 18th. Am I going anywhere? Dry week. I don't know if you are, but I am. But what about me, though? I don't know. Ask Brandy. But what about me? <laughs> I don't know. You and I are going on a staycation. <laughs> are, are we glamping? <laughs> yeah. We're, we're doing a glamping staycation. <laughs> <laughs> we're staying in Joe's. We're staying in Joe's airstream. Right. I think on he, campus. You may have a thing or two to say about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is Rare Whiskey Friday. Yes. We, so we, welcome to Rare Whiskey Friday. Oh, you're gonna make me do that. Yeah. Wait. I, wait. I tried. Oh, no, no, hold on, though. This is your turn. Is because it? we're trying to do it all in one breath. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Right. That's fair. Okay. <laughs> now I'm, I'm nervous. <laughs> I know. It adds a whole nother. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I can't, I'm laughing. Don't look like that because it makes me laugh. <sighs> now that's worse. <laughs> is my ass funny to you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that is though. <laughs> Am I a joke to my clown for your amusement? <laughs> All right. <laughs> I can't do it. I'm smiling. It's like trying to. I'm not looking at you. <laughs> I'm not looking. Now I've got the giggles. <laughs> Uh, Daniel, what is Rare Whiskey uh, Friday? Uh, all right. <laughs> Why is this so hard? This is ridiculous. One breath. You got this. I know. If I have walked into it knowing. Okay. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. Uh, okay. <laughs> Just, well, <laughs> damn it. You're taking so many breaths right now. One, yeah. One breath. I know, I know. Here we go. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I don't know. You can't do it. Come on. I don't know why I'm laughing. I believe in you. All right. Okay. I got, I got performance, nervous. Performance anxiety. Yeah, it is. Welcome to Rare Whiskey Friday. We're going to go a few and sample a few things. Some of them are large brands. More often than not, they are small craft distilleries without a large amount of distribution. If you should be so lucky as to live in a place where you can get your hands on this bottle, you're welcome for the review. And thank you to the Magnificent Bastards. You sent it in. <laughs> Did you do it? Yeah. Did you do it? All right. That's pretty good. Uh, that uh, pause was me. That's pretty good. Trying to force more air out of my diaphragm. That's pretty good. Just punch you in the stomach. I did it though. I mean, yeah. it, it that wasn't was, that was smooth, okay. but it effectively was one breath. It was, it was very good. You set the bar high. Okay. Set the bar high. <laughs> I'm excited about this for a couple of reasons. This is McLaughlin Distillery, and these are both from the Magnificent Bastard, Audrey Sargent. Audrey Sargent, you Magnificent Bastard. But how often do we try something and think, you know what I'd really like? To try this at cask yeah. strength. Yeah. This is the McLaughlin Baby Barrel Bourbon Whiskey. Oh, no way. Followed by the Baby Barrel Cask Strength. Yes. Right? So, um, their Baby Barrels, when I looked it up, I'm pretty sure, and, unless I read on the wrong site, 2.5 gallons. Oh, that's very now small. That that's very small. Is a baby barrel. I mean, a five gallon barrel is going to be like that yeah. big. And yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. two. Good Lord. Right? Wow. What? So, these guys are uh, <laughs> Swickly? Yeah. Swickly? S E W I C K L E Y. Swickly. Swickly. Yeah. Swickly. Pennsylvania. It's just outside of Pittsburgh. All right. This is the. Cat? No, yes. this is the normal one. That's a hell of a color on it. I know, right? Well, oh. 2.5. Yeah, right. True. Okay, they, they probably got that in like three weeks. Yeah. Now they do say um, they use extremely small barrels to achieve maximum flavor <laughs> or maximum of certain flavors. Their barrels they make in house. Okay. They Cooper. That's impressive. Their own barrels. I was I was about to ask where the hell do you get two and a half gallon barrels? Yeah. Oh, they got they make them, of course. Yeah, I don't geez. think I've ever seen them for sale anywhere. No. Okay. I mean, we can get ones that are close to that, but uh, they use barrels from the north. I see, like the five gallon ones, mm -hmm. and then uh, we have a few of this kind of like you put them on the Saint Bernard around the collar, those size barrels. Here's what you tend to see. Ready? One liter, five liter, twenty liter, and that's effectively metric. The twenty liter. You and your logic with yeah, your metric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Keep, keep track of yours. These two are this one. These are ours. So be careful. This is that one. Okay. The non-cask strength is ringing in. Holy f Wait a minute. I put them backwards. That's what I'm thinking. 
Yes. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm, dude, I put my nose in this. Yes. And I'm like, wait a minute. This. Yes. Well, I wanted that to be left right. Okay. 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 So right. non cask is 45. Yes. That was close, guys. No, okay. That was close. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be okay. I, I smelled it and thought, that's dramatic. This was basically my world turning upside down. <laughs> Me thinking, wait, this is the cask? And this, that can't be we, right. We should proof down everything. This is what happens when I'm pouring while talking and losing track of things. So you do get a more deep, rich, intense nose mm -hmm. on the cask, but both have a really nice nose. Let's get into the specific flavor. Yeah, the first one, uh, dark chocolate raspberries. Uh, I get caramelized something sugar. Something else, yeah. Caramelized sugar. And then oak. Yeah. Even on a small one. I mean, even on like non-cask strength, there's oak. I do like that nose. Yeah. Very woody. Oh. Very oh. woody. Very oily. Yeah, oil and wood are wow. overpowering everything the, else. But it's the most buttery caramel into a vanilla. Look, these are the same guys who made that devil one that tastes like Charred, remember? Really? Remember that one? That was, that was, I think, anger bottled. I think <laughs> this is that person's idea of subtlety. <laughs> but this, I really like this. Yeah, but Like still. the devil's thing, that was, why are you hurting me? Why did I do to you? Yeah. That was, that was a violent act in a bottle. But this, this is still though, compared to like a one-year-old Balcones oak, like heft. Oh, yeah. Or a, a really older garrison where it's wood dominant. Can I tell you right now? Mm. The fact that they made that devil's whatever thing, mm -hmm. same people did that. that. Yeah, they know, they can make a whiskey. They, mm -hmm. I don't. I want to know the thought process between. Were they trolling with that? Yeah, you know. I what was the devil something? Them what, was down. It, what was it? Devil something? Devil, devil's cut. Devil's. I don't, know. I don't remember. Anyway, yeah. I want to invite them down just because they seem like the kind of ball busting, right. like our kind of. Okay, brown sugar just just sort of crawled to the front, mm -hmm. like, but not. The taste of brown sugar, but like when you're opening it to cook, the density of the smell of brown sugar, dude. This is if you stewed apples and you melted butter in with the mm -hmm. apples. This is a really with brown sugar pie. on top. Wow. Okay, let's go to the cask. This is really, even though it's the lower proof. By the way, read the batch on the back of that. How is this only forty five percent? I know. It this is not, a tremendous not amount. Like it. This is supposed to be first impressions, but this is too fun. Uh, this is batch 220, dated uh, June 20th. This is a year ago that they bottled this. Oh, she donated these in August of last year. Thank you. That's how far behind we are, guys. Thank you. Um, and this one is bottle 155 instead of batch, mm -hmm. dated August 20. All right, I'm going to the cast. August 13th of 2020. On the nose. Whoa! <laughs> the ethanol definitely is higher, sharper. Yeah, a dominant, and and then it's wood oil and vanilla. Yeah. That's bizarre. I didn't get a lot of vanilla in the other one. Eventually, a butter caramel revealed a vanilla on the slower proof. I gotta tell you, on the nose so far, I like the 45% lower proof a lot. Oh! That ethanol is so strong, it's obscuring all the nuance and subtlety. It's hot. Mm, it's too much. Yeah. And all I get is wood oil and, and sweetness. It is. It's too concentrated. That proof down one is great. Yeah, and the, it's kind of mind blowing because Weird. because forty five percent is not a high proof. It's pretty damn low, mm. but the amount of flavor and richness that you get out of that, mm. man, there's something to be said for a two and a half gallon barrel. Yeah, it's still too oaky for me. This, oh, if, I, yeah, no, no. that's very. If I had to pick, that's very surprising to me because I'm finding so much common overlap, common ground with a lot of Texas whiskeys. I know, I, I agree, but there's a lot of Texas bourbons I don't like because of the oakiness. Hmm. All right, now we're gonna try. Kind of want to just wander back. This is a gift from Blake Kaiser, the magnificent bastard. Blake Kaiser, you magnificent bastard. Right. He also said he's part. He does the that's neat podcast. Oh, okay, cool. I don't. I don't. Um, that's neat. That's neat. <laughs> um. And all I could think of when I saw this, we've done these guys before, not mm -hmm. this one, but no. I've got my wonder back, wonder back, wonder back. I've got my Chili's baby. Wonder back whiskey. Barbecue sauce. <laughs> um, do we have any water? Um, what happened? To oh, Tommy cleaned. Freaking Tommy. With your cleanliness. Normally he puts a couple of bottles over here just to hold us over, but all right. 
Problem solving. Yeah, I'm going to do the same thing you did. Wander back. We got Oh, hey, there's real water in the melted ice in here. 45, 48.5%. What is a... Another water. Ooh, that tastes weird. Yeah, because you fished it out of an ice machine. It's been cycled. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. It's all yours, man. Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> okay. Um, Wander back. Son of a bitch, I'll do Why? Like a trash can, at least. No. It's right here. We dump whiskey on this I carpet. I just told you this was yours. You could do we like, just, no. whatever you want with this. Why? We just, the carpet's covered in whiskey. It's going to be fine. All right, so this. Uh, I am in charge of this one. Okay. This is a Spirited American Single Malt Whiskey. Yeah. Hood River, Oregon. Hood River, Oregon. I've got a great story about Hood River, Oregon from my band days. Okay. Oh, speaking of, you had a show over the weekend. How'd that yeah, go? I did. I played in Waco with yeah. Aaron. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. How Aaron, Aaron Consulman, his old buddy of Daniel's, and he was recently on The Voice. Yeah. So they did a show together in Waco. Yeah, it was a great show, and it felt good. It's funny. You guys all know me as Whiskey Daniel. That's a very recent part of my life. Mm -hmm. So when I get up on stage and put a guitar on and stand in front of a mic. No, there's a common. There's a common. This is it. This is the, you know, no, 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 it's not that. Well, be it performing yeah or whiskey yeah yep <laughs> no it's uh that's when i stand up on with a guitar and a mic and i feel like oh i'm back here i am yeah like this is this is this is me you know what i feel like whenever i'm in front of a large crowd and microphone hmm. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> not stress no just, just like oh these people like, oh, these people need me to be they have expectations they need me to be much more than i am yeah <laughs> if only you knew how quiet and boring i am yeah for me being on stage with music is coming home mm -hmm. it's just coming home all right um this is hood river oregon they're yeah. sourcing whiskey but i can't figure out where from and they don't say they do say they have a relationship with westland um, but I don't know if this is Westland, but this is six-year-old malt. Now, here's what's interesting to me. Yes. They're definitely not saying they make it, right? So there's, they're not obfuscating that. Yeah. But they do say they have relationships with a bunch of different distilleries, mm -hmm. and they reach out to those distilleries to have them do their recipes. Mm. And then they bring those barrels back to Hood River and age them. Mm -hmm. And so this feels... If it, they really do have that level of control closer to what we're doing with Balconis, where we tell Balconis make this stuff, then sure. here's what we're doing. Can I tell you? What is that? Very minty cider. cider. Yeah, but um, but like spearmint. Minty cider. Yeah. Spearmint cider. Yeah. That is wild. That is very unique. I don't it think is. I've, it's perfume. I don't think I've had a whiskey like this ever. Me either. It really is apples. Yeah. It's, uh, you know when they say malt? I would swear the category this this has to be would be like a rye. Maybe the, the mint is like an herbal thing in this This slider. is six years old. Wow. That, I'm not smelling that. Yeah, it is. It's lighter. I mean, cider is kind of light. Mint is definitely light. Like a minty cider. Wow. Look, wow. they are not, they didn't put any of the tasting notes that we're getting on this bottle. What did they put? They put generic ones. Uh, toasted hazelnut, vanilla, caramel. Mm -hmm. Like those are just, those are just in every fucking whiskey. Can I, tell I mean, the toasted hazelnut, maybe not, but. Can I tell you right now? I was mm. talking to a whiskey ambassador earlier today. He mm. does it for a living. And we were talking about an episode that we're gonna be doing together on the Whiskey Tribe channel. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, say, so, hey, in our episode, I wanna be talking about how easy it is for you to make mistakes to where, you know, you just get so fixated in your own wheelhouse, you can't really relate to what other people are experiencing, blah, blah, blah. He says, man, like I knew a guy who, um, his world, so, so much was day to day, nothing but Basil Hayden. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. like, that's the only thing he ever experienced was Basil Hayden, Basil Hayden, Basil Hayden. And then the moment he had an opportunity to try things outside of Basil Hayden, mm -hmm. It's like, whoa, I, my understanding of Basil Hayden is totally different because I had only lived in this little microcosm. Yeah, and he started to learn where Basil Hayden fit yes. in whiskey right. as opposed to just, like, like where am I, play, where do I live? Yes. Yeah. So my, the reason why I bring this up is because if they're getting notes like, like 
and they missed the apple pie. The hazelnut vanilla and started experiment. No, to be fair, we haven't tasted yet. Maybe yeah. on the taste. Okay. But we're saying like toasted hazelnut vanilla salted caramel. That's blinders on, baby. Could they be so fi- like focused in their world? Yeah. That no, Emma and I are always worried about that yeah. when we're doing barrel blends or blends. Yeah. Which is how much how much tunnel vision do we have here? Yeah. How much are we finding something because we wanted it to be in there when we were blending for it? Mm-hmm. So we find it. But anybody else approaching it clean is like, I don't think that's in here. Yeah, I think the best way to get around that is to pour it blind for people who have no idea that it's yours. So our monthly event at Cotta Barrel, they're doing that now. And they can't suspect that this is our stuff. Right. They have to believe, oh, we're pouring some special stuff from our friends in other places and trying out some experimental things from other people who are trying to get our, you know, uh, honest opinion and we want to know what you think. We need to kind of uh, as much as possible to Bula Rasa that environment where they're not feeling like they're obligated to say nice, nice things. Nice word throw down. <laughs> All right, let's, let's taste what we're talking. Okay, there it tastes like vanilla and caramel. I think their tasting notes are on palate. The, on the taste, definitely. Yeah, but the nose is totally different. Nose is actually superior. I on the, It's the nose is superior? Yeah. I think the taste is superior. Really? I'm very much liking the taste. Wow. Because maybe it's the water I drink. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I'm finding. That nuttiness. Yeah, well, it's probably wet. It might be Westland. They, I am finding that nuttiness. That coffee yeah. nuttiness that I love. It's, and in, it's in Deerhammer. It's in Westland. It's in that one note. Hazelnut? Yeah. Yeah. Nutty, yeah. Hood River, Oregon. I think Oregon. they're naming that. They're, yeah, Oregon's kind of up in the up in kind of up in the area there. Mm-hmm. No, that's good. I like that one. I like the hell out of it. Uh, oh, yeah, it's of the taste. Mm-hmm. Now, hold on a second. Maybe we're busting balls where there was no ball busting necessary. Are you finding salted caramel on the taste? Sure. I could see how that little bitey edge could be salt like. Vanilla. So I think they described the palate and not the nose. No, they not describe the nose. Like the nose is a thousand miles off. Mm-hmm. And then hazelnut. That's the nuttiness. I think you might be the, the nuttiness. Yeah. Okay. So the notes are nonsense. We just right. rambled on for five minutes and wasted your time. Hello. Yeah. Okay. Now this is where we're ending. Are you ready? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. This is something that we were responsible for sourcing, bottling, and selling. Okay. But John Clark, who is a patron saint of whiskey. Bought a bottle of it just so he could donate it to the vault Wait. so that we would review it because he wanted to see our tasting notes. Yeah, I'll t- can we, I don't think we can do that. Well, so we can patron St. John Clark. John Clark, you patron St. Oh my gosh, Daniel in the distance. What yeah. are you doing, John Clark? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> our world collapses. Right. John Clark, you yeah. patron St. of whiskey. All right. So, John Clark. look, Ranger Creek. You guys, this is what's happening. The only upside is this is unavailable and no one can ever buy this again. Right. So we can't profit off of this bottle. Okay. But this is our distillery. This is friends of ours, Ranger Creek, who we know and love what they make. So, uh, so let's do this. Rather than give tasting notes, because we don't review our own whiskey, let's tell people about Ranger Creek. Okay. Good. So Ranger Creek is a San Antonio distillery, and they are doing some super cool shit. Mm-hmm. They're doing smaller barrels, full-size barrels, they're doing finishing, they're doing malt, they're doing rye, they're doing bourbon, yeah. they're doing smoked malt with a rimfire, maybe yeah. one of my favorite things they make. Yeah, me too. So oh. the, 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 yeah. the, the rimfire, and it's usually like in small half size, like 375s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 375. So good. Amongst like my top 10 favorite Texas uh, yeah, whiskeys. Absolutely. I love the rim fire. They're also doing aqua, uh, aqua vite. Okay. Or no, uh, aqua, it's not aqua vite. It's a, uh, it's of, damn it, my mind went blank. So it is to like Nordic, like Sweden and, and such, what gin is in right. England. It's, but the dominant uh, thing is anise instead of, uh, uh, instead of juniper. Yeah. Um, and it's not, uh, it is aqua, uh, damn it, what is the name of that spirit? But they make it. Anyway, they do really interesting shit. Absolute, and the cool thing absolute, about their rye, absolute, it's not absinthe. 
Absolute. Absolute, Jesus. Like, okay. <laughs> the cool thing about this, this is, and this is cool what we're getting to do, which is Scottish style independent bottling of tech, other people's spirits craft whiskey. Featuring. Featuring their distillery. Other brands that we think deserve to have a spotlight shown on their work. Yeah. yeah. So on the label, the only thing you see of us is Crowded Barrel, mm -hmm. and then it's Alliance, and then underneath the whole label is them. Yeah. Ranger Creek, where it came from, Master Distiller, Josh Gardner. Yeah. He's a badass. Um, and so this one is specifically 64.9% because we bought all these at cask strength, right? Right. So this is 64.9%. And this is what I love about Ranger Creek. This is their rye. However, it's aged in used oak. Oh. Uh, right? Uh, so it's 100% yeah. Danko rye. D-A-N-K-O. But there's no dank. Oh, wait, no notes. We're not doing notes. Right. Yeah. yeah. There's no Danko rye. Yeah. Right? Uh, but it's aged in the barrels that used to hold their bourbon. Mm -hmm. So you get 100% rye, used oak, aged. Does not smell. We're not giving enough, so. Totally. So here's, here's the thing. Uh, there's such small scale stuff in the distillery right now. Hopefully in 2021, 2022, we'll be scaling up a lot more. Mm. Anything that's released is going to be like Patreon notes that you and Emma give. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But give some notes on this because you could get a cask strength... Uh, you could get this from Ranger Creek. Not from us. Not from us. But then, you could get this from Ranger Creek. Put this in a bottle from Ranger Creek. We're not yeah. We're not reviewing our own stuff. Yeah. A bottle from Ranger Creek, we will review it. And we will say that, hey, we're friends with these people and we have a business relationship. We're not going to review our own stuff. And they're doing cooler and cooler shit right now. Yeah. They're doing stuff with the Texas Whiskey Festival uh, with Jake. They're finishing some special barrels and things. Can't really get our hands on it. Here's to fight, steal your drinking. Get right there. <laughs> if you fight me, fight for a friend. If you steal me, you steal your liver. Side. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us. <laughs>